officers, including the civilians, be charged to court. And operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has raided the headquarters of the Dangote Group in connection with ongoing investigation into forex allocations in the country. On the arrival of the EFCC, uh, of the EFCC operatives at the office of Dangote Group in Lagos, they demanded documents relating to allocation of foreign exchange to the group in the last 10 years. They scrutinized the documents provided by officials of the group for hours and taken away uh, uh, some of them and took away some of them. The EFCC had written to 52 companies directing them to supply documents supporting the allocation and utilization of foreign currencies to them in the last 10 years. The EFCC letter to the companies is part of ongoing investigation into alleged preferential forex allocations to individuals and organizations by the Godwin Amifili led Central Bank of Nigeria. For more on this development, I'm joined by legal practitioner Bolanle Ulubani, uh, who joins me now on the news. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Ulubani. Walk us through what the standard practice is in cases like these. Um, does the anti graft agency, in a Gestapo manner, raid organizations or ask them to submit their documents you know, relating to this development? Well, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. The procedure under our laws, the 1999 Constitution and various laws governing investigation and uh, prosecution by various anti graft agencies, including Nigerian police, is that the security agency ought to have first obtained a, a, a warrant for a search, a search warrant from a court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, in this case, it could be the uh, federal high court or from the state high court. So uh, this can be done by an expert application that does not require the party being investigated to be present. Once by affidavit evidence, the graph agency can supply enough documents to show that uh, the search is necessary for establishing a case. So I, I presume that the EFCC had a warrant. And uh, notwithstanding the fact that the EFCC has already written to the Dangote group to supply those documents, I'm sure that they will also have written the CBN to supply those documents. The need for a physical search may have been due to additional information being supplied to the EFCC from intelligence sources or from whistleblowers that documents may be, may be concealed or that going to the particular location may help to unearth you know, documents that would otherwise not have been voluntarily submitted. So they would have their reasons for taking on a physical broad daylight search as they have done. You know, investigators have in the past months accused CBN of um, favoring and enriching some individuals and organizations um, through what they call non-transparent allocation of foreign exchange to them. But do you think we have a rich track record in this country of seeing investigation of this nature to the end? particularly when it concerns high-profile organizations? Well, what we have always, you know, been aware of in Nigeria, even I'm saying the ordinary man on the street, is that the system itself has given us the impression that it is not fair. From import duty waivers to certain companies where ordinary citizens and companies are paying import duty, and some are not paying to the allocation of forex by preferential means and standards. You know, these means and standards may be due to personal interest, conflict of interest issues arise, and from political influence. You know, we've had stories of the Dangote Group being loaned money for the Dangote refinery. These stories are, you know, unverified, uh, but it's in the public domain. And so if 
we are hearing today that what is good for the goose may not have been, you know, good for the gander, and that some people have favored more than the other, and suddenly you find the uh, anti-gas agency now seeking to question, you know, why that should be so, you know, after many years of having uh, pretended like an ostrich with his head in the sand and everything was normal, well, I think it's a step in the right direction. We know that these things happen, and this is why some Nigerians, some companies, some individuals seem to make it or achieve or succeed more than those who are going through things and are doing things in a normal uh, way that has integrity and transparency. So if, if, if it is established, wherever it is that, you know, uh, that, that made the foundation for this, that supported this without authorization from the relevant authority or the executive arm or minister, wow. you know, should be sanctioned, prosecuted, investigated and prosecuted. At the same time, you know, there's also the question of the autonomy of the CBN. One must look at the CBN Act and see whether the CBN governor or the CBN committee itself acted ultra virus its power. Interesting development. Um, we'll see what happens thereafter. Legal practitioner, Bolan Leo Lugbani, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. The National Union of Nigerian Students has asked the federal government